In a previous video, we looked at how we could transfer skin clusters between different topology meshes, but all of those skin clusters always had the same number of influences. They always had the same influences. So the really cool thing about the the weight, um, so the fall off system, is that you can you know, we can use the the blend fall off as we looked at. We can combine weights together and we can separate them. That basically means that we can take the weights from one joint or several joints and combine them and apply them to a new joint on another skin cluster. So let's look at how we can do that. So here I've got um, basically two kind of, uh, or like three geometries here. Let me just put this onto my nice layer. So that we have one geometry that has a bit of weighting that's a bit nicer than all of these so we can see we have the clavicle we got like the wrist and then we got all of these kind of um extra like kind of twist joints happening here as well you can see for this and if i select this one oh sorry add to selection you can see we basically have some really kind of crappy weighting going on here so we want to transfer the the nice kind of skinning that we've done for this geometry onto the other geometries now, first off, I'll just go straight in between these two um, topologies that are the same. So really what we need to do here is that we need to, I'm just going to rename this to skin cluster, um, you know, remapped. So we'll go here and what I'm going to do is I'll just go here and I will add these in. I'll do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to be going from this full skin cluster into the remapped one. Now we'll be using the per influence weights and we'll basically getting the component fall off. And if we take that in here, weight layers, and then we need to do the fall off eval to basically get these fall off weights or basically these weight functions, evaluate them on this geometry here. So what I will put in here is do this and I'll just add in this just because I've gotten in the habit of doing it. And if I now basically push this through, we should, oh, if I just show the weights here, we're getting some weird funky stuff again. So what's really happening here? Well, again, we have to remember all of these kind of default values that we have here. Set these down here, set these to zero because we don't really want them to, we don't want to flood these by default. We just want to take purely the kind of skinning information that we have here. Um, and if I can now go back, Know, let's just do quick DG dirty and try and repush that. And you know that's not really doing anything now. So kind of what's happening here? Well, it looks like I missed one of these kind of um, connections here. So we do DG dirty now. Boom, we're back. So again, watch out for like these small little connection is that you that you might miss here and if things are if your kind of skin clusters are falling down to the origin or if they're they're like completely disappearing like that um and like turning on and off the skin cluster is basically like taking them on and off you're probably missing a connection somewhere in your graph here so especially if mine isn't crashing or if it's not spitting out any errors so just take a step back through your your kind of graph and, and watch out for what you're connecting here now there is one really strange thing happening here though. So if you look at this clavicle looking nice, arm on the hand, elbow hmm, on the shoulder, wrist on the upper arm here. And if we go through, yeah, that's really strange. So what's happening? Well, like I said, it's because we've got a different number of influences between these. And what's really happening here is that these component follow-offs, they're basically being assigned like per order influence here. So the what we have to look at here is if I take this skin cluster here and 
if I'll just get rid of these. So really what's happening is that it's looking at the order of like the inputs that you have here and it will be doing the same order oh, here as well. And if I'm just going to hide, get rid of that, and I'm just going to do that. Sorry, cool. So you can see basically here, we have the arm, sorry, the clavicle first, then the arm second. And if we look at this one here, we can see that we have the clavicle first. So that's why that's getting the kind of correct weighting here. But if we follow this one, you can see that's actually coming from the wrist. So the wrist here, if I just push that up here, that's the kind of second input here. And on the remapped one, it's the arm. So if we go here and if we look at the wrist, the wrist weighting is down here. So if we now go here, we can see the wrist is kind of, it's going between here. So if I go on arm, you can see we have the wrist weighting down here while wrist here is now up here. So we have to make sure that we kind of maintain this order through our kind of transform uh, network here as well. So what I'll do is I'll just go and I'll quickly organize these. And looking at this, I'll have uh, upper arm first, and then I should have upper arm. Yep. So that'll be, uh, let me see, upper arm four, upper arm three, and I'll have upper arm five, and we'll go upper arm one, sorry, lower arm, and here. So you can see that's basically the order that we're Kind of adding these into here is that the first two inputs is the clavicle the wrist and then upper arm and then lower arm it's basically the order that you're seeing um no sorry it's not actually it's it's a reverse order there uh, because it's alphabetical i think um but we have to make sure that we kind of maintain this order here so now that we go back to our kind of um setup here how can we actually get the the weighting from these joints onto the upper arm here. Well, this is where I mentioned we have to use the blend fall off, and we can use this to basically combine together all of the influences from um, one of these to another. So what we can start off with here is that we we can go out from the component fall off, and note here that if we expand this out, uh, we're basically getting the same number of inputs or like outputs that we have as inputs here. So we go from matrix zero to 11, and we go from zero to 11. So these will basically correspond to the same inputs here. So if we go here and we just kind of get rid of that, we know that the first one is basically the clavicle, and that's the same here. So we want to kind of maintain that same connection. So we'll just connect that straight through here. And we know that then the next five, oops, sorry, that the next one is the wrist. And in the remapped one, the wrist is actually number three. So if we go and take that here, we want to put that in there on the three. And now the next five will be the upper arm. And then the next five will be the lower arm. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to call this upper arm. And I'm going to start connecting in all of these kind of different targets here. So I'll do that. I'll go through and I'll add these in. So we're on three, four, and five. Cool, so now we can push this through as that waiting there because we want the upper arm, that's our kind of second input there. So I can now hide that and I can do a new um, blend fall off and I'll just call this lower arm. And let me just go, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. If I go here, whoop. 
And I'll go through again and do, so that's two, I'll go three, go four, and five. And I'll connect the output of this into the second one here. Cool, so now we have all of this kind of set up here, um, and this should now be transferring through correctly. And nope. Well, let's try and just kick this network again. And nope, we're not really seeing any changes here. So what's happening? Well, if we go back in here now, I'm not sure if this is something that I'm doing wrong, um, but I often have issues with these, um, this kind of fall off network updating a bit strangely as well. But actually, the issue is here. So you can see in our blend fall off, we've just connected in and we have all these kind of multiply values that's not really doing much here. They're all just kind of multiplying. What we don't, what we want is we don't want them to multiply. We want them to add together. We have to make sure that we kind of change this base weight as well to zero because we don't want the kind of base of this to be doing anything. We just want all of these influences, like each of these kind of joint influences to add together. So I'm going to go add, 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 add. You can already see it's starting to come together. I'll do the lower arm and I'll make sure that I go add, 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 and add, and boom. What do you know? So if I now go in here, you can see that we now have kind of soft skinning for the arm and for the elbow that matches the kind of skinning that we have for all of these kind of individual joints here. And if we want to get this onto our kind of low poly geometry as well, you know, all we really have to do now is we just have to take this exact setup and just in, uh, insert like a trans, uh, uh, transfer node in here as well. So just call this low remapped. And I will add that just in here. I'll get rid of those two. And we'll go and we'll do a transfer fall off. And let's see here. So what we want to do is we want to go in. I want to make sure that I add in the, uh, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. We want to do the weighted geometry here. And we want to add in these kind of weight functions that we've done here as well. So we want to do exactly the same kind of order as we did before. We want to do this, and then we want to do our kind of upper arm here. Then we want to do our lower arm. And then we, at the end, we want to do this kind of wrist here. And now we need to uh, basically push this into a fall off eval. And if we push this through, now need to connect in the geometry here as well. Uh, and now we can push this into our wait list and voila, gorgeous. And we can now see that we have the same kind of skinning if I just go here between these kind of meshes here as well. And it's doing exactly the same kind of weighting here. So that basically just allows us to have, you know, one kind of main uh, kind of skin cluster in here. And if you do have a system where, for instance, for games where you're loading a lot of different characters, where you need to have like, oh, you might have code where you say like, oh, um, on export or something, take all of the influence for these and just add them to like the arm. You can now have that happening live, just going through here as well. So it's a really, really powerful system um, like that as well. And you can do a ton of things here with this, but um, I'm, I'm not sure, like you might need some kind of cleanup depending on like how well you set these things up and how well you paint them, but hopefully this will help you in the future.